Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity we have in you today. We are greatly blessed. We thank you for bringing us into your presence. In the name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Today, I want to continue a little on the subject I was sharing with last week. Lord, I know you need somebody. Amen. Everybody say, Lord, I know you need somebody. Amen. Lord, I know you need somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If there was ever any message that I believe I have to share with people is this message that God needs somebody somebody to do something for him. In Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 30 It says, I sought for a man. I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. So God is seeking for somebody but this verse says, I sought for a man. Amen. Not even I sought for a good man. Or I sought for a nice man. Or I sought for a perfect man. But I sought for a man. Someone who would make up the hedge. What it means is that the hedge has a gap. So the person would stand in the middle and he would be part of the hedge part of the protection. The person himself will be part of the, the hedge and stand. He will stand in the gap of the hedge. The hedge is up to here and up to here and you, you also stand in it. Okay, I'm the hedge. Come. So, this is a very, very important message for every level of Christian. You see, what has kept me being a Christian is this truth that God wants people. You know, I am not, I am religion, pure religion. Do you see the way religion is practiced? It's boring to me. You know, I can't lie to you. When, before I was a Christian, when I say Christian, I mean a born again Christian. We used to go to church. My parents had me going to church. And uh, there were hymns and all the things. And in, our, in the church that I went to, I don't know if you had it or you've seen it before. There's a little wooden thing with the numbers of the hymns we are going to sing today. Have you seen that thing? First swim, four, one, six, second hymn, this, like that. And I used to use that as a kind of timer to see where we are in the service. And pure church services like that, all right, traditional church services, were boring to me because they were meaningless to me. I'm not saying that they are meaningless, but to me, they were meaningless. You get it? The hymns were songs we had to learn and come and say, oh, da, 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 It was boring. Up till today, I don't, like, I don't know hymns, and I don't really like them. They remind me of funerals. That's the truth. I know Jesus also sang hymns. There's nothing wrong with hymns. The words are beautiful, but it was meaningless to me. 
it was more like a ritual that we had to go sit down and I'm not that type of person. Rituals and going through ceremonies and so on, I don't like those things. I'm not a ceremonial type. Oh, yes. <laughs> so joining the church and just sitting in church so you just go through the rituals. You sing this hymn, four verses, this one. And they have a way. Hymn 412, first and last. They'll say it. Hymn 412, first and last, which means first hymn and first verse and last verse. First and, they, they say it in a way. Hymn 212, first and last. Then they start. First stanza and the last. And that was my favorite priest, the one who would say first and last. Ah. And that means that thing is going to be shorter. Hallelujah. So, unfortunately, that version of Christianity was the only version we had when I was in secondary school. It was, it was a very rare thing to have a charismatic church. The charismatic churches came up after. So, it was lifeless. And honestly, it's not going to be easy to just go through some rituals. Every Sunday you come to church, sing these four, three fast songs, four slow songs, three fast songs, take one offering, short sermon, and then um, two, fast, two more fast songs, and then offering, and then closing prayer benediction, and recite some prayers. Have you ever listened to some of the priests reading their prayers? They are so powerful and meaningful, but it was meaningless to me at the time. Now, this when I when they are reading the prayer. I mean, yesterday I was somewhere and they were by the graves that they were reading. I would say, Oh, this is a very beautiful prayer. Very, very meaningful. I wish I could have, I wish I could get the man's book from him. Oh, yes. But I'm just saying that boring, ritualistic Christianity is boring to me, even young, laded people. Now, in the, in the days of Israel, when Israel was under the kings, right, they also had this problem. And the problem they had was that people didn't want to really serve God. They rather serve Baal and Ashtoreth. Ashtoreth was one of the gods. It's actually a demon. Yeah. Now, I've always wondered why, and you would go and you'd find the house of Baal was full. The worshippers, even the day that Jehu killed them all. He asked for all worshippers of Baal to come and the whole hall was full. Wow. Yeah. Now I've always wondered that what is the struggle between Jehovah and Baal and Ashtoreth? Why were people attending Baal in the first? I mean we have a, a living God who has brought us to the Red Sea and all that. Mm -hmm. Why would you need Baal? But there, there's a reason. How many want to know why Baal was interesting? To people, because the, the, the God called Baal had temple prostitutes, do you see, who were part of the worship. The worship included these young ladies who were in the temple to service the worshippers. <laughs> Just like how we have ministries in church, these worship, these were part of it, and it was part of the worship. Yes. So if you are a normal man in Israel and there is Jehovah with their singing hymns and other things, and then there is Baal with these sizey ladies to furnish and service the worshippers, and they had rooms. You can understand why more people were attending 
Baal and Ashtoreth. Oh yes. Because it was a very there were other benefits. Yes. And Jezebel, you remember Jezebel? Oh yes. Jezebel was a queen who is a spirit. She was religious in Revelation chapter 2. It talks about Jezebel. Jezebel appears again. And Jezebel is teaching, is a prophetess. So as part of the religion, she teaches them to commit fornication. Remember, she calls herself a prophetess. So she is religious. Do you see? And she, remember, was the key person involved in the worship of Baal. Remember, Elijah killed 400 prophets of Baal, and because of that, Jezebel decided to chase him and kill him. And this is just, look at it, Jezebel. She's a prophet. It's not she seemed to like there was a religion of that sort. And she teaches fornication. So you go and then they educate, they show you what it's about. Oh, yes. What a church service. Can you imagine? This is the teaching. So when you go there, that's the teaching. And for any young person, such teaching of how to listen. She teaches myself and seduces them. So as she's doing, there's some sexy feeling as part of the church service. You, you, you can't believe it, but you see, this is the reason why people were attending this place. The Baal Church, Ashtoreth and Baal. Yeah, it's attractive. Because a young person cannot be fixated by rituals. We are full of hot blood and energy, energy. Few people have not done bad things when they were young. That's why the Bible says, forgive me for the sins of my youth. It's a, it's a verse in the, in the Bible. The sins of my youth. Oh, yes. Remember not the sins of my youth. This is David. So, when I talk about, Lord, I know you need somebody, it's for you to know that as soon as you step in church, God is recruiting you and your energy. He's not leaving you and your big energy that you have. How many have energy? Hey! He's recruiting you and your energy, your life, the breath that you have, the strength that you have. is recruiting you to join his army. To get involved and exert and spend and expend your life and your energy on his and on him and on his work. Rather than just being there, your energy is just freestanding energy moving around, okay? And you come and do these five rituals, three slow songs, four fast songs, one offering, two offerings, one short sermon, and a closing hymn, and then you are out of there. Please, it cannot keep you on track. That's why most people backslide. Most people backslide. Especially when you are young and you are freely available. Yes. Freely available. Ready to pearl. Ready were pelled when you were ready to pell. <laughs> Listen, that is why you must believe this simple message. Lord, I know you need somebody. I know you need. And, and your answer must be, Lord, you can depend on me. I'm available. I'm available. I became a pastor. I was 25 years old. I started working for God. I was 16 years old. Yes. I gave my life to Christ. I was 16. 
full of energy, full of a drive. I've always had a drive. I've always had a drive. But it, there are some things you cannot stop. You have to direct. Like a river. You can't stop a river. It will, it will be a dam and there will always be pressure. That's how come we get electricity. You can't stop it. You can only direct it. Say, go to the right, go to the right, go to the right. When they are building a dam, they divert the river. Go around this way, go around this way. When they finish, then they let it come back. Then a dam is formed. Yeah. You have to give your life and your energy at the youngest possible age to God. If you think, even when you do that, it's not easy to stay and remain a Christian. Yeah. People think that we are bored, but we are not bored at all. Are you bored? Ah! Not at all. Not at all. And if you don't take care and your religion does not include serving God, your religion will not be strong enough to maintain a hold. That's why you come to church and the whole church is full of young people. And you ask yourself that, are all the young people here pretending to be, to be here or pretending to be happy? We are not pretending to be happy. Everybody is free. You can be here if you want. You can leave if you want. Yes. You will not have to stay here at all. The song Waba Wabir, it was not composed by me. There was somebody in the church who composed the song that Manele Waba Wabir. We are sleeping here today. We are sleeping here today. We know what we want. The second verse says, We know what we want. The first verse says, Waba Wabir, which means we shall sleep here. And the second verse says, We know what we want. We know what we want. So I want to encourage you to believe. I I, I want you to believe that God wants you and God likes you. Yes. One day a brother came to see me. He had a job from the bank. And the bank wanted him to work for him. Wanted him to work for the bank. And I said, okay, it's a blessing. But my heart was broken because I felt that God also wanted him. So it was between the bank or God. But the bank won. (laughs) Who is winning in your life? Who is winning in your life? What is battling for your energy? Oh, yes. Have you ever heard that scripture which says, flee youthful lusts? There are things that you do only because you are young. As you get older, your sins are more things like depression and discouragement and those type of things. But when you are younger, there's a lot of energy. You see the people who shout when I'm preaching? It is energy in in them. They are members of the shouting stars. They are the members of the shouting stars. Old people's church, we don't have such things here. And I don't see why not. Oh, yes. Now, Today I'm just not really preaching much, just a short message. Number eight. Give me one of the books, Uh, Zoe, give me one of the books. Lord, I know you need somebody who, this is number eight, I gave you up to seven. Last week. So today I give you just one or two. Lord, I know you need somebody who will deliver people from the devil who wants to rip their soul in pieces. Hmm. He wants to do what? Rip their soul, the soul of a person in pieces. Yes. This is the book. Lord, I know you need somebody.
How many want one of these books? We are launching it today. Amen. Now, Psalm 7 verse 1. Oh Lord my God, in thee do I put my trust. Save me from all them that persecute me. And deliver me. Lest he tear my soul like a lion. Rending it in pieces. While there is none to deliver. Well, lest he do what? He tear my soul like a lion. You see the devil is ready to tear people's souls. Your soul speaks of your emotions. Do you see? Your emotions. Your will. Your feelings. And Satan is ready to play with your emotions until there's nothing left of you. So Lord, I know you need somebody who will help the people whose souls are ripped by the lion. Look at the scripture. Lest he tear my soul like a lion, rending it in pieces. That's what the devil does. He takes our wills and our emotions. Young girls' souls are torn in pieces. You meet a man or a boy who says, I need you, baby. And you actually believe that he needs you. You actually believe that he needs you. But as soon as you are a little mature, you will not believe that he needs you. When he says, I need you, you know that it's not true. How does he need you? How can he need you? How does he need you? Well, 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 I mean, he, he has been in the world without you all these years. Now, how does he need you for what? How? As your neighbor, I mean, how can he, how can he need you? Nothing like that. He can never need you. But a young girl's soul will be ripped into pieces. Yeah. Tears on my pillow. Pain in my heart. Uh, come on stage because you need to sing some of these songs. Tears on my pillow. Pain in my heart. Yeah. And you see people's pillows are wet. As if the weather is hot and they are sweating. Oh. But it is tears, not sweat. Yeah. Air conditioner can never dry the pillow. Sing that part. Oh my heart. My tender heart. My tender heart. It's been broken so many times by so many things. So many times by so many things. Oh, but Jesus healed me time and time and time again. Time and time again. When I had tears on my pillow and pain in my heart, Jesus heals my heart. Sing it again, sing it again. Oh, my heart. Ah, 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 ah. told me she said you are a man of knowledge without experience she told me I was a pastor she told me you are a man of knowledge without experience she said the broken heart that I've experienced the pain in my heart and the tears on my pillow you don't know anything about it you are a man of knowledge without experience
Oh, yes. Lord, I know you need somebody who will talk to the young children. You see, even if you have been through one before, you see that you talk differently. Oh, yes. Somebody like Reverend Eastwood, you know, his children died. The kind of scriptures that he sends to me and to my wife, nobody sends such scriptures. I don't even want to tell you the scripture that he's been sending. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yeah. And he's speaking out of experience. He's not a man of knowledge without experience. <laughs> oh, yes. So maybe you are so young, but there's always somebody younger than you. One of my greatest shocks in life has been to find out that my lecturers are not so much older than I, I am. You know, I was with someone recently, he was asking me about one of my lecturers. He said, ah, is he not dead? I said, he's not dead. So I thought he's dead. He's not dead. He's not dead. He's not so old. I said, ah, I thought he was dead. Yes. You see, <laughs> people think they are so old, but when you grow, you find out that the person who can teach you sometimes just five years or maybe eight years or just a little, but because you were the student, it looks so big to you. But when you grow, you realize that it's not so much older. You don't need to be so much older before you can help somebody. You don't need to be so much older before you can help somebody. Yeah. Especially if you have the word of God in you. Amen. Number nine. Lord, I know you need somebody who will deliver the people from trouble. Psalm 22, verse 11. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. There's none to do what? Help. Psalm 22 and verse 11. Many bulls have compassed me. Strong bulls of Bashan have been beset me around. They gaped upon me with their mouths as a ravening and a roaring lion. God is looking for someone to help. Verse 11 says, They be not far from me, for trouble is near. Trouble. There's trouble in this world. And God is looking for somebody who will have trouble? Who will help, sorry, who will help people in trouble? Oh, but pastor, I don't know much, many verses the, in the Bible. Now, you may not know many verses in the Bible, but your willingness and your presence I experienced something when my son passed away. I noticed the people who came and those who didn't come. I noticed it. it, you, it you never know that you will notice it, but you notice it. They didn't do anything. They didn't give anything. They didn't even say anything, but you noticed that they came or they didn't come. You just notice. And you see, God has people, if you give yourself to work for the Lord and join the army of the Lord, we have people in the church whose work is even to go and just be there, not to do anything or say anything. There are not so many things to say all the time, but you notice those who are there in time of trouble. When uh, uh, September 11 happened, all those troubles, they expect the president to be there. They expect you to be there in the midst of the things. They expect you to be there. So, God is looking for people who are ready to work. Not ready to come and sing three fast songs, slow, three slow songs, three fast songs, one offering, one sermon for 20 minutes, and then three, another three fast songs, another offering, and then we've closed. It's a boring ritual. You'll be tired of it soon. But if you are part of church and part of Christianity, I can guarantee what to let you be around in 20 years from now. 
It will be if you give yourself to his work uh, and you join in and you listen carefully to this message. Lord, I know you need somebody, somebody who will say, yes, Lord, you can depend on me. And it is because of the few people who have said yes. It's because of those people that we even have a lot of certain good things going on. Out of my class, 55 of us, 55 of us graduated or finished in that year. 55 of us. I don't know how many are pastors. Everybody is doing something great. But Lord, I know you need one of them. And I said, yes, Lord, you can depend on me. In 1989, I said, yes, there was nothing. I didn't know that. <clears throat> I didn't even know what is Lighthouse. Our church wasn't even called Lighthouse Chapel International. I didn't know First Love Church. I didn't know anything. You don't have to know what is going to come out of your willingness and your obedience. All you have to do is to say, Lord, I know you need somebody. You can depend on me. Whatever you want me to say or do, I, I, I'll be happy to do. I can give this fine. I, don't, I have this fine. I can say this fine. Is there, is there anything I can do? Is there anything? There is. There is. There is. Sisters, thank God for your lives. Thank God for your lives. You never know what a good girl is till you meet a bad girl. Hey. I'm coming down. <laughs> so, so now let me tell you something. I say, you never know what is a good girl till you meet a bad girl. Yeah. Just being a good girl to someone just even a year younger than you or even your age can change somebody's life. I met a good girl. Her name was Betty. I met her in school. What a blessing. She was just a year, two, two years ahead of me. Oh, yes. She taught me, read your Bible. She took me, she took me, she took me to action. Yeah. Instead of a nightclub. Wow. Yes. She, she, she taught me how to read the, my first Bible. She, taught, she, was, she was there. I got it. NASB. That's why I like that version. NASB. That was my first Bible, New Testament. She showed me. Open here. Then she gave me daily bread. Open. Open daily bread. Open here. Read this. Read this. You understand it. That's how to have your quiet time. She, she practically did it in, with me. And from then I started to have my quiet time. Oh, yes. You never know the effect of being just a good person in relation to someone your age. I met another brother. I actually, actually met a, a nana. He met a lady, a sister, and the lady's house was near where he passes to go to school. And the lady said, oh, he can come to her house. <laughs> whilst he was in the house when he was passing by in his school uniform as he was passing by and he came she gave him food and whatever and then one day she came out of the bathroom He's, he, he, the, boy, the brother told me he said that I collapsed he, he said I, I fainted oh, yeah. that was the end of him you see that was the what? The end of... He explained to me, this is how I learned to fornicate because he's struggling up till today to stop fornicating. He cannot stop it. He said, what the lady taught me. A, a grown-up. Oh, yes. To a young boy. He's changed. He's changed. His life changed. Even how to marry, you can't. Because you marry one person, you need others. 
I've met a number of young men like that. A number. That is how they learned all these things. Pray that you meet just a good girl. Lord, I know you need somebody who will be there when there is trouble. Who will be there when the soul of the person is ripped apart. Who will be there to help, not to destroy. I said, you don't know what to say. You are not spiritual, but you can be a good person. Your brother told me, I faint, I collapsed. I fainted. Oh, yes. That's why I have Betty's picture in my office. Because I, God bless her. What she did for me. And she taught me all the Christians. She took me to uh, SU. She took me to uh, Christopher's all night. Reverend, um, is it Abbey, not Abbey, uh, the one who died. There was an all night every 31st. There was no churches with all nights, but there was a man of God who was doing an all night at the art center. She said, let's go, 31st night. I told my mother, my father, I want to go. He said, what are you going to do? 31st night. Whilst we were there, that was when 31st revolution happened. In the all night. Oh, yes. All these things, somebody will take you for the first time. Lord, I know you need somebody. Lord, I know you need somebody. Lord, I know you need somebody. You can depend on me. Sing that part for me. I know you need somebody. I know you need somebody. Mm. You've got to have somebody, Lord. You can depend on me. You can depend on me, Jesus. You can depend on me, Jesus. I know you. They think they can go through it all. They think they can go through it. You can do the same for them, just like you did for me, Lord. I know you need somebody. Mm -hmm. I know you need somebody. You've got to have somebody, Lord. You can depend. can't go through it all. They think they can't make it. You can do the same for oh, them. Oh, yes. Just like you did for me. Just like oh, you did for me. I know you need somebody. I know you need somebody. You've got to have somebody. Lord, you can depend. This is my, I love this message, I tell you. I can preach it all my life. Oh, yes. I'm trying to persuade people to serve God. Yeah. Yeah. Take your life out of your self-centeredness and be a blessing to somebody. Lord, I know you need somebody. One day, somebody asked me, where do you get all these people? You have a lot of people Talented people. <laughs> Where do you get all these people? Where do you get all these people? They are right there. When you lift up your eyes and you start helping, you'll find all kinds of people able to do all kinds of things. Lord, I know you need somebody. 
Number 10, I know you need somebody who will comfort and take pity on the broken heart. Broken hearted people. Psalm 69. Reproach has broken my heart. I'm full of heaviness. I looked for some to take pity, but there was none. And for comforters, but I found none. I look for what? Comforters. I look for comforters, somebody to take pity. Very rarely can you find. <laughs> My son's passing away. People see it even as a program. They see it as a program that we are coming for. Yes. Pity or even understanding what is going on. It's not easy, even to, easy to get somebody who even pities or even has understanding. It's wonderful. And not just myself, but everybody in this world. You see, one day I was in, I was in Malaysia, in Kuala Lumpur, and then it was uh, Mother's Day. Then the pastor's wife, the pastor brought uh, a, a special mug, a big mug for drinking coffee. And they had written on it something about mothers. And they brought several. They said, everybody who is a mother, stand up. We want to give you one. So a lot of the ladies stood up. Then I look around. You know, immediately when she said that, my mind went to those who are not mothers. So I looked around and I saw some ladies sitting down. And when they were giving the mug, they were just passing it. Yeah. Take the pass behind them. It's like, my heart, I felt for them. You know, then, after we went, uh, then I think, I don't know whether it was my wife or whoever mentioned to the lady that I was thinking about those who, did, who were not mothers. Then, the lady, the lady pastor's wife said, your, your dad has a soft heart, huh? He's thinking about the People who don't have babies. Yes, I was. I was. I was. I have that heart. But many people don't even know. Somebody is saying, I don't have a child. Or somebody doesn't have a... You don't know what this person is experiencing. The Bible says that God was looking for somebody who would show pity. But there was nobody who seemed to really understand. One day, somebody was uh, trying to be pregnant. And uh, we thought it was a pregnancy, but then it changed. So the person brought me the test. Then it was that uh, the test was negative. As I was holding the test, I started crying. I couldn't control myself. I just burst out crying. You see, maybe God wanted me to just cry. I cried and cried and wept. Maybe God wanted me to show pity that even God's heart towards the person, whatever it is that is not working. Oh, yes. You see, most people don't understand things till you've seen one. But you don't have to see one before you understand. Is there anybody to show pity? That's, that's even just one of the works of God. The Bible says Jesus had compassion. He just pitied the people. God is looking for somebody to have compassion. Oh, yes. Are you listening? You're very quiet. <laughs> Lord, I know you need somebody who will have pity. Number 11. Lord, I know you need somebody who will deliver the needy and the poor. Psalm 72 says, he shall deliver the needy when he crieth, and the poor also, and him that has no helper. Number 12, Lord, I know you need somebody who will deliver those who sit in darkness. Psalm 107 verse 10, such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. Anybody who's experiencing death is sitting in the feeling or the environment or the atmosphere of death. Not a small atmosphere to be in. Not a small atmosphere. The shadow of death. The shadow of death. 
though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. This scripture says, such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and in iron. When I was with a widow whose wife died, I put her in my car. I said, come, sit in my car. And I drove around the whole city with her, talking to her in the middle of the night. I didn't know what to do. God is looking for somebody who will sit down with people in the shadow of their death. You, you, even, you, you want to change something, you cannot, but you can be there. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm explaining to you that God is looking for somebody who will be involved in his work, any work at all. And you must, you must agree with God today. You must agree with God today. Not just to come and go through three fast songs and three slow songs and share the grace at the end, but be somebody who has joined in to participate in God's work. There is room at the cross. I, I, I was preaching in the first service today. The rising stars. I was telling them. I was telling them a scripture that helped me all my life. As I see them, I say, no. God help these little ones. I showed them a scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 12. That all things are lawful. But all things are not helpful. All things are lawful, but I will not be brought under the power of anything. I told them that there is no problem that you have as a grown-up that they didn't start when you were young. And whatever you start as a young person, it follows you like a snake that has attached itself to you all through your life. God is looking for somebody who talked to the secondary school students. I want to be one of those people. How many want to be one of those who will be there? Lord, I know you need somebody. As for me, ritualistic Christianity, it doesn't attract me at all. And that is why today, when even they start singing hymns, I just, I just quiet, I just waiting for them to finish. The shadow of death. Number 13. Lord, I know you need somebody who will be a refuge to those escaping the snare of the devil. Oh, you are going to escape through somebody's intervention. Amen. Psalm 142, verse 4, it says, I looked on my right hand and beheld, and there was no man that would know refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. We need people who care. Oh, yes. Lord, I know you need somebody who will comfort the weak and oppressed. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 1. Oppression. So I returned and saw the tears of the oppressed and those that had no one to comfort them. Amen. And on the side of the oppressors, there was power. On the side of the oppressors, there was power. But they had no comfort. No one to help people that are oppressed of devils. Devils pressurizing you, pressurizing your life. In the furthest corner of this church, upstairs, wherever you are, listen carefully. If you give yourself to God's word, you'll be surprised how your personal problems get solved. That's how it, it is. There's nobody here who's sitting here without some kind of a problem. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. And if you don't know the next problem that's going to arise from next week. Yeah. But in spite of your problems, as you give yourself to do something for the Lord, you'll be surprised. What a blessing. When I see all the young people singing in the choir, I thank God. It's such a blessing. Keep singing. Keep singing. Keep serving the Lord. God is going to bless you. Stand to your feet, everybody. The whole message is in the book. 
We'll be launching it in a minute. Lord, I know you need somebody. How many are ready to say, Lord, I know you need somebody. Take my life. Take my life. Let it be consecrated to you. I'm willing to do something for you and to serve you. Thank you, Father.
Father, we give ourselves to you. Thank you for this opportunity to love you, to know you, to serve you. Lord, I know, we know you need somebody. You can depend on all of us to do something for your kingdom. Thank you. We pray this and I pray on behalf of everybody. And I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. As every head is bowed and every eye closed, if you are here today and want to be born again, you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, pastor, pray with me. I, I want to know God. I want Jesus to save my life, change my life today. Then raise up your right hand like this, just like this, and I'm going to pray with you. God bless you. You want to give your life to God. You want to give your life to Jesus Christ. Maybe somebody invited you, but today you want to give your heart to Jesus Christ and lift your hands up like this. God bless you. If you have done that, you lift your hand, you want to be born again, you want to give your life to Jesus, come to me from where you are standing. Just come all the way to the front. Take my life. Take my life. You are, you are saying, take my life. You are saying, take my life as I give my life to Jesus. Lord, take my life. Lord, take my life. Lord, take my life. Come. Come. I want to pray with you. Come. Come and stand here. I'm going to pray with you. Come on, God bless you. Consecrated Lord to thee. All my days I give to thee. Oh, to love Lord is the great command. Lord, I want to love you more. Fall in love with you so deeply. God, show me how. your hands and say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus. Everybody join in, please. Everybody pray together. We are all praying together. Say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. I give my heart to Jesus Christ. Take my life. Say, Jesus, take my life. Take my life from today. I give my life to you, Jesus thank you. Save me. Change me. Wash me with the blood of Jesus. Today I am born again. Thank you Lord. In Jesus name. Amen. Now let's all lift our hands together again. Say after me everyone. Take my life. Lord Jesus. I know you need somebody. Today I give my life. I give my heart. I give myself to serve you. Thank you. Thank you. Father, Lord, receive me. Use me. Take my life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.